delicious pastiera of rice. Rice pastiera, crust or no crust? That's the question. What do you like best? Hello everybody, this is Alessandra. Welcome to my home, welcome to my kitchen. Today we're going to be making pastiera di riso, rice pastiera. Pastiera is what's determined for an Easter cake. Uh, it's a, a rice ricotta cheesecake, if you, you can call it that. Uh, don't get overwhelmed. I know it's a lot of stuff on the table. It was overwhelming putting it all out, but you know, I'll go step by step. So nice and easy. So you can get it right because I want you to make these delicious foods for your family and friends. It's going to be three steps. The first one is to cook the rice. The second one, we're going to make the pasta frolla, the, uh, the dough that's going to be on the outside of the this uh, pastiera and then the filling with the ricotta and the cooked rice and of course the strega. The, this recipe originates from the Campania region which I am from but I'm from Napoli. This is more towards Benevento and Avellino so that's why the strega comes into play. So let's get started. And to cook the rice it's going to be we have one and a half a cup of arborio cannaroli rice or a medium rice is will work so i have the rice right here it's a cup and a half i have two cups of whole milk a cup of water i have a cup and a half of sugar but we're going to be using half for the cooked rice and the other half when we mix it with the ricotta i have a whole uh, lemon that we're going to be using the uh the rind a cinnamon stick about half a teaspoon of salt and two tablespoons of butter for the pasta frolla we have two and a half cups of all-purpose flour. We have half a cup of sugar, a stick of butter that's been melted, or you could just leave it out, make sure it's nice and soft, a pinch of salt, two eggs, and we're going to be using the zest of a lemon. Now to assemble everything together, we're going to be using the cooked rice, a pound of ricotta, four eggs, half of the sugar which is going to be about three quarters of a cup because we have a cup and a half in total a, a zest of an orange and i have the strega here we're going to be using one shot but also one ounce shot but what i also want to show you is that what i do is with my citron it does need citron i chop it up i add the strega and i keep it in my fridge for years not even months for years so it doesn't spoil you always have it there and it adds great flavor to any time you're baking any type of ricotta cheesecake also another crucial important thing in this cake is the mille fiori mille fiori is a um, an orange blossom essence and it's uh you could find it in italian stores you could find it on amazon i will link it if you're using the liquid i would use two teaspoons if you're using these little ones that come in a syringe like this, it's the pure oil extract. Just use one whole one. In a medium saucepan, we're going to add the milk, the water, salt, butter, the cinnamon stick, and now let's do this, the zest of the lemon. While this comes to a boil, rinse your rice a few times till the water runs clear and then we'll be adding it. Just boiling, let's get the rice in. Give it a good stir, bring it up to a boil again, then lower your flame and cook it with a lid right on. As the rice is cooking, uh, that's going to take a little bit, so get the flour in, your sugar, let's get a little bit in, the salt. If you're wondering if I'm whisking it, it's just that it incorporates a little bit of air. It kind of mixes everything evenly before you add your uh, wet ingredients. So I went ahead and I did that. Now I'm going to add my put the butter in. Okay, two eggs, go right in. Now let's zest the orange. Okay, so there goes the last part of the, the uh, orange zest. So now what we're going to do is create the dough. Start in the middle, 
Just mix it and slowly start picking up from the side of the bowl. See, as you work it, you'll see it'll all start coming together as a bowl. Just continue mixing it. Okay, I'm gonna move, move it over to a work surface and we're just gonna create a smooth dough. Now, my advice, please use the gram. If you have a scale, it's always so much more precise to use the gram measurements um, than the cups because depending uh, how light your flour is, if you uh, pack the cup down, so you can really get a, a different measurement on the flour. So I like to do the, I like to use the uh, gram measurements for more precise. Okay, so the dough is ready. I'm gonna make a nice panetto. Here it goes. And we're going to wrap it in plastic wrap and let it sit in the fridge uh, about 45 minutes to an hour. I wanna show you the rice. It looks ready. All the liquid has evaporated. It's nice and sticky. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add half of the sugar that I kept on side. Remember I said before, half is gonna go in the rice and the other half. So now close your heat. Just give it a good stir. The rice is all ready. And what you wanna do now that the rice is soft is remove the lemon peel and remove the cinnamon stick. Let's cream the ricotta cheese with the sugar first. Okay, and now if your ricotta is a little wet, uh, drain it overnight, it's always better. The one I buy uh, is nice and dry, so I didn't do that. Now that the ricotta and the sugar is already creamed, let's get the four eggs in. Always leave the eggs at room temperature. You don't want to use the eggs that are cold out of the fridge. So I always try to remember, actually I have a funny story. When my father-in-law lived with us, it was a battle. I would take eggs, flour, not eggs, flour, eggs, butter out, uh, come back, we'll run errands, come back, they were back in the fridge. And I used to like, sometimes I would get mad, sometimes I would just laugh it off. Okay, good memories though. Now that he's gone, they're all good memories. So here, come closer, I want you to take a look. You see, it looks liquidy, but don't worry. That's how it needs to be because the rice has a lot of starch. The orange zest goes in. Now I'm gonna shut off the, the mixer, okay? Because we need to uh, concentrate. All right, so let's get, I have my cedro is in the strega. Take a look, what the cedro, the cedro is citron. So you see that right here? I'm gonna put a heaping tablespoon. That's an Italian tablespoon, American tablespoon, or other parts of the world, it's two tablespoons of citron. That's chopped. If you like it in cubes, you could do that too. Yori oil, be careful, don't open it over the bowl in case a little bit of the glass snaps off. So you gotta be always very careful. Okay, there it goes. Get the oil in. Wow, an explosion of spring scent. Unbelievable. Let's get the strega in, strega di Benevento, ecco qua. One final mix. Time to get the rice in. Get it all mixed. Now, I don't suggest making the rice the day before, and I'll tell you why. Because of the high content of starch, it becomes, uh, it forms into a, into a bowl and it's hard to break apart. I like to cook it, let it cool, and then use it immediately. But you can make the pasta for all of the day before. 
you see what I mean? Like now, because the, the rice is, I made it not too long ago, it all breaks apart, otherwise it creates these large lumps and they're hard to break apart. Set it aside and let's get the pasta frolla ready for. I'm going to be using a 10 inch spring form. I find that it's the easiest and you need a 10 inch, 26 uh, centimeters, uh, because this is a lot of content. So you need a large one. Oven on 350 and we'll get to the next step. I left this more than 30 45 to an hour in the fridge. So let's give, give it a little time to come to room temperature. You, what do you want you? What do you want you? I know, I know, but I'm making you need to move out the hair is gonna get everything. Come on. Make sure you always sprinkle the flour top and bottom so it really makes it easy. And also your your board, your uh, rolling pin. Okay, just mix it in. Give, give it a circular shape as you're uh, rolling. There we go, see that? Always a little bit of flour so you avoid getting stuck to your work area. Just like to do that. Then just that's what happens. The other side is gonna stick to the bottom of the uh, work counter, so you want to make sure it's always well floured. And I'm gonna say the thickness about one eighth of an inch in thickness. We're ready to try to put it just in place the uh, spring form over so you see you have enough around uh, the perimeter so it should be good so let's go ahead and roll it around the rolling pin what's great about this dough it's very forgiving now don't give it go slowly because you want it to be dropping inside there you go see that okay perfect now just just like this help yourself and let it fall inside because it's got to reach the bottom of the spring form okay run your finger along and push it to all around see it's, it's got a little air bubble it comes out so it sticks nicely to the bottom See, this one broke, no problem. Just fold it down. It's a very forgiving dough. Sharp knife, trim the top because we're going to use the top that we're trimming to make the, um, the strips. Making the strips, make sure you're, it, you got a flower down so it doesn't stick. You see, now that I've been working on it, look how soft and beautiful it is. Okay, we're going to make like a log because we want the strips that are long. Again, always sprinkle. Did I say 30 times already? I'm sorry. Okay, there it goes. I'm going to just do it and not say it. Let's fill it con questo bendy dio. It's almost it's over three quarter full. I have a little um, little uh, zigzag cutter. I think I bought this in the garage sale. And when I picked it up, I was like, I wonder how many Nona's hands, how many how many cookies it made. It's always fascinating if items could speak, right? So let's go ahead. We're going to cut strips uh, about an inch wide back in the day when I had a lot of time to waste I used to use a ruler those days are gone so let's go ahead and gonna start in the middle if you want to come closer and take a look just with like this gonna have another one on the side right here Wow. 
stuff. But yeah, plus one, I think we don't need any more. Look, take a look at these, uh, how much dough we have left. It's a perfect uh, recipe for this. Don't throw this out. Make little strips and uh, throw, them in, throw them in the oven with the cake. You'll be happy you did. Okay, what I'm going to do with the tip of a knife, just move the border down like this. Be careful, work gently all around. Ready for the oven. An hour and a half in the oven, look at it, it's beautiful. Let's now let it cool down before you remove it. Let's open it up. Look at this. What do you think? It's beautiful, it's heavy, it's going to be delicious. I've also made it, depending on the area from in Italy uh, or the family, some make it with crust and I also made it with dark crust. Same recipe, just don't make the crust and cook it on in the spring pan, in a 10 inch spring pan. Una bella spolverata di zucchero a velo. You always need the powdered sugar on top. Let's decorate. Let's put it on both. Let's get a piece cut. Guardate un po'. Look at that. Oh. The mille fiori, that strega, smells perfect. Now let's go ahead and also open this one with just the, uh, with no crust. Ecco, è perfetta. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell notification button, share my recipes, make them for your family and loved ones. Grazie, arrivederci alla prossima. Ciao, ciao.